Chapter 11.1, Journalizing and Posting Purchases Transactions Using a General Journal. As we continue on moving, looking into our merchandising business using the five special journals, um, we've used four. We've looked at the purchases, we've looked at cash payments, we've looked at sales, and we looked at cash receipts. Now we have to look at the general journal, which is our fifth and last one, that basically shows us what we need these are transactions that won't fit in any of the other ones. So that's what we'll be working on. So we see a transaction here, um, very familiar transaction. If you've been with us through the whole trimester or uh, school year so far, uh, bought supplies on account from Chris's card, $64, memorandum number five. A couple things you want to point out there. There's that M again. If you remember that M, it does mean memorandum. Remember, I also told you way back in market in accounting A, it was also means for multiple lines and you'll kind of see what's there. Also, if you notice before we get into this transaction, the general journal has changed a little bit. It literally has no special amount columns and it just has a general debit and a credit. So every number that we're gonna have here is going to have an account description. So as we look at this one, bought supplies on account, we circle our adjectives and underline our verb. So we bought supplies for on, on account. So there's our on account. And if we buy on account, we're gonna use two different uh, we're going to use our two different accounts we're going to use is obviously going to be supplies. And since we bought on account and we are going to be paying in the future, we are going to use accounts payable slash Chris's card. Now, you'll notice the slash. This is new. First uh, in the first trimester, it was just accounts payable Chris's cards. Um, now it is accounts payable slash. And the reason it's the slash is there is because we when we post, there is a little bit of a difference, but we have to post to the accounts payable controlling ledger and to the Chris's cards accounts payable subsidiary ledger. So that that's one number will get posted to two different areas because it gets posted to two different areas. That's what that slash means. So as you can see here, supplies is an asset. You can tell that our assets are going up because we bought supplies. Assets are increased with the debit because they sit on the left hand side of the accounting equation. Accounts payable is going up. We owe someone more money. It's a liability. It sits on the right-hand side of the accounting equation. And since it sits on the right-hand side of the accounting equation, it is increased with a credit, $64, as you can see there. Okay, so what we'll do then is we just kind of go left to right in the journal. The date of the transaction, in this case, it was November 1st. Our, we're going to list our debit first, and we always lift, list our debit first. So my supplies is my debit. I got that information from memorandum number five, and I'm going to put a debit of $64. Next, we need to enter our credit. In this case, it's accounts payable Chris's supplies. No doc number is needed because the M5 allows us to understand that it is there. It's the same transaction. Post reference is going to be, we're going to put a slash in that post reference, and we're kind of saving that for later. That's to remind us when we go back and post this $64 credit that we have to post this to two different accounts, two different ledgers. We post it to the accounts payable ledger, and then we post it to the Chris's supplies accounts payable subsidiary ledger and we put our $64 that's a real easy transaction pretty straightforward again the only really thing that's different is the slash so as we continue on now obviously we our other transactions we've purchased merchandise and we've sold merchandise well in this case we decided to return some of the merchandise that we purchased uh, from Chelsea products um, and you can see that we have a debit memorandum number five so we take our two accounts. Well, if we purchase some merchandise, we purchased it on account um, because it has a debit memorandum. That's how we know that. And then we use a new account, which is called a purchase return and allowance. If you think about this, the account's payable account is going down. We do not owe someone as much money. We actually owe them less money now because we're returning the merchandise. Because of that, we are going to debit the account's payable Chelsea products. And purchase returns and allowance is going to be a credit. And the reason it's a credit is it's because it's a contra purchases account. If you remember, a purchases account is a cost account. This is a contra account, so it is designed to lower the book value of the purchases account. So to give you an idea what a book value is, if you have an A in a class and you just took a test and you got a C, your grade in the grade book might be an A, but your book value is going to be much lower than that. That's the same concept that purchase returns and allowances does. It's designed to lower the cost account of purchases uh, book value down. So again, we do this the same way, left to right. We go November 5. Our, my first one, I'm going to list my debit first. Always do. Accounts payable slash 
Chelsea products. And again, that's there because we need to post to two separate categories, the accounts payable controlling ledger and the Chelsea products subsidiary ledger. My doc number, I got this from Dem debit memorandum number five, and it's a debit for 640. Now I continue on. I don't need to put the date again or nor the doc number because this is all part of the same transaction as the way it reads out. Purchase returns and allowances is going to be the name of my credit, and that's going to be $640. That is how you post buying merchandise, uh, buying supplies on account, and returning merchandise that was bought on account using a general journal. Hope this helps, and if you liked it, if it did, please like the video. Don't forget to follow, and we'll see you in class.